Welcome to reports which made headlines last week. President Muhammad Buhari on Monday responded to profuse apologies from South African President Cyril Ramaphosa. In the wake of the xenophobic attacks on Nigerians and other foreigners in South Africa, the president pledged that the relationship between the two countries will be solidified. Receiving South Africa's special envoy, Jeff Radebe, on Monday at the presidential villa, President Buhari extended appreciation to Ramaphosa for coming to explain to Nigerians what happened in South Africa recently, leading to killing and displacement of foreigners. He also went down memory lane, recalling the roles played by Nigeria in engendering majority rule in South Africa and ending the apartheid segregationist policy. Earlier, Radebe apologized on behalf of his president for what he called act of criminality and violence that recently occurred in his country. The special envoy stressed that South Africa was an integral part of Africa and fully committed to peace and integration of the continent. On the death toll as a result of attacks in South Africa, he informed the president that there was no Nigerian casualty. According to Radebe, 10 people died during the attacks, two Zimbabweans and eight South Africans. He added that South Africa remains eternally grateful to the role Nigeria played in ending apartheid. The envoy was also hopeful that the scheduled visit of President Buhari to South Africa would solidify the relationship between the two countries once again. President Muhammadu Buhari on Tuesday dissolved the Special Presidential Investigation Panel for the recovery of public property as currently constituted with Mr. Okoi Obono Obla as chairman. This was revealed in a statement issued by Femi Adeshino, Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity. Adeshino said that the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abuka Malami has been directed to immediately take over all outstanding investigations and other activities of the SPIP. Part of the statement said, quote, The panel was established in August 2017 by the then acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibaju SAN, to investigate specifically mandated cases of corruption, abuse of office and similar offenses by public officers. President Buhari thanks all members of the dissolved panel for their services. The president looks forward to receiving the final Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission ICPC report on ongoing investigations of the dissolved panel's chairman. End of quote. The managing director and chief executive officer, CEO of airline company Airpeace, Alan Onyema, was on, on Monday appeared on the floor of the House of Representatives. This followed an invitation by the lawmakers. The purpose of the invitation was to commend the airline bus over the humanitarian roles it played in the wake of xenophobic attacks on foreigners, including Nigerians in South Africa. It was expected, as resolved by the House of Representatives, that Onyema be recommended for a national award. His appearance came a day after members of the House recommended him for national honors. Oyema made the headlines for positive reasons when he offered to evacuate Nigerians from South Africa for free, following the xenophobic attacks that crippled businesses owned by foreigners in the country. Speaker of the House, Femi Bajabi Amila, appealed to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Oyema, to honor the invitation of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs for a full briefing. The Speaker, however, faulted the Minister over what he describes as Onyema's refusal to obey the invitation of the Committee, stressing the respect is reciprocal and vowed to take up the matter with President Muhammad Buhari. Two representatives of the Process and Industrial Development Limited on Thursday pleaded guilty before the Federal High Court in Abuja to charges of fraud and tax evasion instituted against them in respect of the contract leading to recent controversial judgment of a British court empowering the firm to seize about $9.6 billion worth of Nigerian assets. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Thursday arraigned PNID Limited, Virgin Island, its Nigerian affiliate, PNID Nigeria Limited on 11 counts of fraud and tax evasion. While PNID Limited, Virgin Island was represented by its commercial director, Mohamed Kuchazi. PNID Nigeria Limited was represented by Adamu Usman, who is also a lawyer. Both men pleaded guilty to all the 11 counts read to them before Justice Inyang Echo on Thursday. Kuchazi was represented by his lawyer, Dandesin 
Akunrawa, while Usman represented himself. They were accused of, among others, of fraudulently claiming to have acquired land from the Cross River State Government in 2010 for the gas supply project agreement, which led to the $9.6 billion judgment. After the defendants pleaded guilty to the 11 count, an EFCC investigator, Usman Bangda, was called to the witness box for review of fact, which was not opposed by the defense. Documents relating to the controversial 2010 gas supply contract and EFCC's investigation activities were tendered and admitted by the judge's exhibit without objection from the defense. The judge then went on to pronounce the two firms represented by the two men guilty. The prosecution led by Balas Sanga has asked Justice Eko to order the winding up of the company as a sentence for the offences. The Central Bank of Nigeria on Friday insisted on the implementation of a new cashless policy despite lawmakers' call on the CBN to suspend the policy. CBN had earlier said that nationwide implementation of the cashless policy will take effect from March 31, 2020. According to the policy, a 3% processing fee will be charged for withdrawals of amounts above 500,000 Naira for individual accounts, while 2% will be charged for deposits. For corporate accounts, a processing fee of 5% will be charged for withdrawals and 3% for deposits of amount above 3 million naira. Reacting to the policy, the Federal House of Representatives, in its plenary session on Thursday, asked the Apex Bank to suspend the implementation of the cashless policy. But the governor of the Apex Bank, Godwin Emefiele, while briefing journalists on Friday, said implementation of the policy would continue as announced by the CBN. The banking that claims that Nigerians would suffer the negative impact of the policy, it may feel it said about 5 to 10 percent of bank customers will be affected by the policy. The CBN governor added that the payment system that encourages the use of non cash channels was desirable if Nigeria wishes to compete with the economy of developed countries. He said the policy was first introduced in 2012 adding that a lot of stakeholders' engagement were done to sensitize Nigerians on its benefit. According to him, the cashless policy was suspended in 2014 to allow more payment channels to be developed by the deposit money banks. Emefiele explained that since the policy was suspended, there has been a continuous increase in currency management costs every year. The CBN boss also maintained that credit cards owned by Nigerians might not be used abroad if the Apex Bank did not implement the policy.